What's going on guys, welcome back. Hope you are doing well. In our last chapter, we went over the padding modifier and how it helps us space things out in our user interface. We're gonna continue with that concept and go over something called spacers in this chapter and see how that helps us uh, take spacing a step further with our user interfaces and how it can help us adapt to different screen sizes and all that fun stuff. So this is actually really important to know how to use with Swift UI guys. It's actually really simple too. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. So I'm going to create a new file and I'm going to call it uh, Swift UI view first and it's going to be called spacers tutorial. And we're going to go ahead and hit resume on the preview and let's just get it connected. And we see that we just have the hello world text here. Let's go ahead and uh, let's put this inside of a V stack, guys. So I'm going to say V stack, paste that in there. And I want you guys to just go ahead and below that text, add a spacer. And let's take a look and see what that does. You notice it moves it all the way to the top of the screen. And you could imagine if you did the opposite, and place that spacer above the text, it would move it all the way down to the bottom of the screen. So how exactly does that work? Let's get a visual representation of it, okay? So I'm gonna delete that spacer and let's put it back below the hello world guy. And I'm gonna give it a frame and just give it a width guys of like 24 and give it a background of like any color that you want. So color.blue. And let's take a look and see what that looks like. So you guys notice that it's literally just this like view that shoves the whatever is above it up to the top of the screen, right? We can see that this like blue bar is sort of pushing Hello World all the way up to the top of the screen. If we remove this, Hello World is just gonna be put back into the center. So essentially guys, a spacer just helps us fill empty space. So you notice that we have a bunch of space below and above Hello World. So if I place the spacer below Hello World, it's going to fill all of that empty space and push it up to the edge of the frame that that text is contained within. Right now, the parent frame or the overall frame that our text is contained within is this screen size, okay? So the spacer below our hello world guy, let me comment it back out, is going to push that all the way up to the top because it just fills all that empty space. And you would notice that once again, if I put the text below, it would push it all the way to the bottom. And if you guys were to just delete this text and just have a spacer, you notice it would just fill all of this vertical space. So that's the next topic I wanna to touch on. It is important like to note that when you place a spacer somewhere, it has to be within a stack, right? So the reason it's filling vertical space is because it's within a vertical stack. So let's go ahead and see what happens if we place a spacer within a horizontal stack. So I'm gonna change this to H stack. And you guys are gonna notice I'm gonna put hello world here and nothing is currently happening right now. And let's actually just go ahead and give this guy a height of 24 instead of a width. And you guys are gonna notice now that it pushes our hello world all the way over to the right. Um, <clears throat> so guys, you can it, like, you don't have to set the frame of a spacer ever really. I'm just doing it to give you guys a visual representation of how this spacer works. So once again, let's comment this out and we'll see hello world in the center of the screen. So I'm placing a spacer before the text, right? So in a H stack, the things that appear at the top of the H stack start, are aligned to the left, right? H stacks move from left to right as we go from top to bottom in our code. And a V stack goes from uh, top to bottom as we go from top to bottom in our code. What I mean by top to bottom is we this thing is first, so that is the leftmost thing, and then our text is on the right. So right now it's just in the center, but if I were to comment this back out, we're gonna notice that the spacer starts pushing the hello world all the way to the right of the screen. It just fills that empty space, and it starts here and pushes it to the edge of the frame. So I'm gonna comment that back out, and that's exactly what we're gonna see happening. 
And you guys might have guessed it because I know you're all smart. If we put the text first, it's gonna move it to the left side of the screen. So what I want us to do really quickly, guys, is go ahead and rebuild this Twitter UI that we had in the stacks tutorial. Um, and we're gonna go over how to use a spacer to actually get this stuff to align to the left side of the screen. So let's go ahead and uh, see if we can build this because you guys should be pros with stacks by now. It's like not pros, but you should have a like somewhat of a, a decent understanding with how to use a stack. So we need to, uh, we notice that this is in a vertical list. So let's place this in a V stack. So let's see, uh, V stack, right? And let's uh, then copy this H stack a couple times, two, three, four. So we got four cells, right? So that's looking good. And let's get our image. So I'm gonna replace this text with an image and it's gonna be like black panther dash one. Right, dot resizable. And the reason I'm redoing this guys is just to help you guys get reps in because that's one of the best ways to get good at anything, right? You just do something a lot. And eventually it sort of just becomes like, uh, you know, riding a bike. So then we're gonna say dot uh, scaled to fill dot frame and let's make it 64 by 64. And then we're gonna give it a clip shape of a circle. And let's see how that looks. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. <clears throat> and let's just keep going. Let's actually make this like 56 by 56. Um, all right, now let's get that vertical stack of text, right? So we want another V stack. And I'm gonna say text uh, Lando Norris dot font, oops, dot subheadline dot font weight dot bold. So that looks good. And then let's just copy this. Remove the bold and put Lando Norris like that. And let's make this V stack have an alignment of dot leading because we want that text to align to the leading edge of that frame. And would you look at that guys, let's uh, just go ahead and remove the frame and background color on that. And you guys will notice that that is pretty much exactly how we want our Twitter user interface to look. Now, this ties the padding concept back in. We don't want this to hug the edge of the screen like that. So go ahead and see if you guys could figure out how exactly we are going to apply some padding to maybe the leading edge of our screen on this guy. So, Obviously, we're just gonna say dot padding is leading and that looks really good. And let's just go ahead and copy and paste this guy and sort of replace these H stacks with it and see if our UI looks good. We can just do three. Right, so that looks pretty, pretty, pretty good, right? And next thing, guys, that I want to, us to do is see if we can get this move from the center of the screen to the top using a spacer. So we notice that this is overall contained within a vertical stack, right? So that's why we see that each one of these sort of cells or row views is aligned vertically. And then within each one of those things, it's an H stack and it, it's got some, a couple embedded stacks, which we should sort of understand by now. So, this is like, we could call this like list view. And this is like the cell, cell one. And this would be cell two and so on and so forth. I think you guys get it, right? So this is our cell and this is the overall list, which is why it's placed in a vertical stack. Anyway, don't want to over explain. So, Let's see if we could go to the end of this V stack, right? So this is the last bracket of that V stack. And if we put a spacer here, it's just gonna move everything up to the top of the screen, right? That looks absolutely awesome, okay? And 
if you guys wanted to maybe give it some padding on the top on that V stack, you could say dot padding and then say like dot top, right? So it'll just move it down a little bit. So maybe you could fit something in there like a search bar or a navigation bar or whatever it may be. So let's see what would happen if we put like another view below this spacer okay now that we've sort of built that out and that looks absolutely awesome so let's go ahead and copy one of these sort of cell views and put it right there so you guys are going to notice that it shows up all the way at the bottom of the screen right so that's something you might want to create like a footer view okay so imagine you have some list and you want like a footer at the end of that list that's maybe like a logout button or like a disclaimer message right with like the fine print or whatever it might be then you can apply that spacer and it just fills all of this empty space and then whatever you put below the spacer will be at the end of that okay so that's just another way you can use a spacer guys and let's go ahead and, and take that a step further Right. Imagine we wanted to place like a button on the right of this screen. So or sorry, on the right of each one of these sort of cell views. So we have this spacer pushing everything to the left, but everything we place after this spacer would show up sort of right there. So, for example, I could create some sort of like image <clears throat> and it could be like a system name paper plane dot circle dot fill and you guys will see that that's showing up on the right side there and let's just go ahead and give it a font of like dot title to maybe title right that looks pretty good and then maybe give it like a dot foreground color of like color dot system blue just make it look a little fancy pantsy okay so you guys notice that we have all of this stuff here, right? This image and then this V stack for the text, it's aligned horizontally. Then we have that spacer that put, fills this empty space for us. If I were to delete that or comment it out, this would show up right next to there. And then this would all get shoved into the center because there's nothing sort of filling that space that we want to stretch it out towards the edges of the screen. So that's where spacers really, really come in handy, guys. So we put that spacer back and that looks great. Uh, you guys would notice if we put the spacer after, it would just fill all of this empty space right here. So right, let me say dot frame height 24, just so you can physically see the spacer dot background uh, color dot pink or something, right? Now that's the, where the spacer is getting put. And then if I were to put it back where I originally had it, boom. You guys notice that it just fills this empty space and stretches everything out to fit the size of the screen. So um, now let's uh, go back to this padding concept, right? So our button is sort of hugging the edge of the screen. We don't want that. So this is where you guys would just say padding is dot horizontal, okay? And that would shove that over a little bit. And you guys notice that the spacer automatically adjusts itself to just fill that empty space. So no matter what is in between, it the spacer just fills all the empty space that is uh, between the elements or within that frame, which is absolutely amazing, right? It's adaptive, which really helps us figure things out. So you guys were to notice, like watch this spacer as I adjust my padding. If I said horizontal is like 32, then the padding here takes priority and the spacer just shrinks itself automatically, which is absolutely incredible. This is one of the most awesome features about SwiftUI. So I'm gonna just go ahead and remove that spacer color stuff, comment it out in case we ever wanna bring it back. And then we could just go ahead and if you guys want, just go ahead and copy that for each one of the cell items. And that looks a lot more similar to like what you would see in an actual like uh, Twitter user interface, right? <clears throat> Where you have some sort of action button on the right and some sort of, you know, user information in the row view. So that's just a quick example of how spacers work, guys. 
We are gonna be working a lot with spacers throughout this boot camp. So if you're still a little confused on it, don't worry. We're gonna get a lot more practice and I promise you guys will pick it up as we go. So that's gonna wrap it up for this video, guys. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next chapter. Peace out.